everyone in today's video i'm going to show you how i take my own self portraits and i kind of covered this in my previous video um i filmed a video on all of my equipment like what i use for filming my youtube videos and for taking my instagram pictures so i did cover this a little bit but i'm gonna go more in depth today and i'm also going to share some tips and tricks on how i think you can achieve a better looking picture if you go on my instagram you'll see that a lot of the pictures are portraits of myself and i do take like 95 percent of those pictures with the exception of the pictures that i take outside or obviously like travel pictures and stuff like that roger takes those pictures and he doesn't mind taking all of my pictures like i just have to ask him but since i take so many pictures it just gets to a point where i don't want to bother anyone i'm not a professional i just i i learned things along the way just taking pictures i'm going to show you guys what I do and how I take my self portraits and hopefully you guys find this video helpful. So for my Instagram pictures, I use one of two cameras. I use either my iPhone, I have the iPhone 10, or I use the camera that I'm filming on right now, which is a Sony A7R, which is like the first, I think, of its series. Very old camera, but it does the job. And that is why I still haven't upgraded because I, I genuinely haven't felt the need to. I know that I am going to upgrade, but for now, this camera is amazing. With that said, just a little disclaimer, you guys do not need <laughs> an expensive camera you can take pictures with your iphone and have them come out amazing it's all about what your picture looks like to begin with you need to make sure that the picture that you get from the beginning is good quality it's well lit and it's just not going to be hard to work with when you're editing and stuff like that so it does not matter what you use this is just what i use personally so the tripod that i use is the sunpack ultra 6000 i'm just reading it i'm gonna link everything down below so this tripod the attachment that i has on top has like a little rollerball thing so it allows me to turn my camera so that it is in portrait mode and that's what i use for all of my photography pretty much unless it's like a youtube thumbnail or like landscape but even then i still love to use portrait as opposed to landscape because i feel like for some reason it just captures detail better than landscape especially for cropping or editing in post-production like it just looks better in my opinion and for instagram i feel like pictures that have more like real estate on a feed while people are scrolling meaning it takes up more of the actual phone while people are scrolling i think that that caused more attention than a squared picture or a like horizontal or landscape oriented picture if that makes any sense i don't know that's just how i think of it and it's just overall better to work with in my opinion so whether you're taking it on your phone or whatever camera you have i always recommend taking it like this as opposed to like this unless you're like recording a video or taking like a youtube thumbnail or something like that or a group picture obviously but this is all about self-portraits for photography, I either use my Sony 85 millimeter lens right here. Again, I'm gonna link everything down below. I know that this is very like gadget or like tech talk and a lot of you don't care about this, but this is the lens that I use. This lens is pretty pricey, but compared to other Sony lenses, I feel like this is not that expensive and it works like a dream. This is my favorite lens that I own and it's beautiful and it captures detail like nothing else and it just it makes everything look like butter <laughs> like i love it the pictures that are produced with this are just my favorite in the whole world so this is mostly what i use for my portraits but lately i recently started pulling out my first lens that i ever purchased with this camera and it's the sony zeiss 35 millimeter little lens and this is a very basic lens but i feel like if you again start playing around with your camera you can make some magic with this and i've really been into film photography and like the whole vintage inspired photography and i feel like you get a very similar vibe to like film photography when you take pictures with this lens but again 
on your phone you can either use your regular camera or portrait mode and you're gonna get beautiful pictures as well i'm gonna link all of the little gadgets that you can buy in order to use your phone as your camera and take your own pictures you can just buy a little attachment to hold your phone and you can buy a little shutter release on amazon that's very very inexpensive i used to use that when i didn't have a camera but now i just use my camera because I just connect my camera to my phone and I use an app called Play Memories, which I think is only for Sony, but I could be wrong. I know that a lot of cameras have this. I just don't know if they all use the same application, but I use that application and I just use my phone as a viewfinder. So I'm able to see what the actual picture looks like. So that's very, very helpful. And that's kind of why I've strayed away from using my phone to take my own like self portraits. But again, you guys work with whatever you have. So I've already covered why I like the orientation to be in portrait mode. And another thing that I really like to do is change the ratio on my camera. So right now I'm filming on a ratio of 16 to nine, which is like the regular video ratio. It's like very wide, but height wise, it's, it's not like it doesn't get a lot of the picture, it's just very wide. So I use that for videos, but I change my ratio to three to two for portraits. Like the picture doesn't come out as narrow if you switch your ratio from 16 to nine to three to two. So even though it is in portrait, I get a wider picture as opposed to a more narrow picture if I leave it at 16 to nine. And for the settings that I use, I've changed it throughout the years, but right now I'm shooting on Aperture Priority. Obviously every camera is different and I haven't really played around with other cameras. And again, I'm not a professional photographer, so I don't know a lot about other cameras. I just know that with this camera in particular, shooting on Aperture Priority just gives me the best portraits. And it does depend on the lighting conditions. I find that when I'm outside, I kind of have to change my settings. Always, always, always make sure that wherever you are taking pictures, it is well lit. So if you are going to take pictures outside, make sure that it's either very early in the morning or sometime during sunset or right before sunset when the sun is not that harsh you want that very soft light and it's just going to give you the best lighting in your pictures and if you're indoors obviously always try to follow or chase the light i'm always chasing the light all around my house and you just you always want to start with a well-lit picture to make your editing a lot easier and to just make the overall quality of your pictures better in my opinion like you always want to start with a well-lit picture so this is pretty obvious but whatever you want the focus to be on should be facing the light so i take a lot of pictures of jewelry and stuff so if i want my earrings to be like the center of attention or something then i'll tilt my head and i'll make sure that it's facing the light unless you're going for that like flash photography vintage vibe which i also love as well i also really like moody pictures and for moody pictures what i'll do is i'll find like a light leak somewhere and i'll kind of just adjust my settings to really bring out the details of that light leak i just changed the little exposure compensation down i make the overall picture darker to make sure that i get the details of that light leak because if the exposure compensation is too high then obviously it's going to blow out my light leak it's very very simple little adjustments that i make in order to bring out the detail in my shot and make sure that the overall picture is good but this isn't really meant to be like photography 101 i'm sure you guys can find a million videos on how to set your camera up but this is just what I do. So once you've adjusted all of the settings on your camera, and again, I change my settings according to light, so I don't just stick to one particular thing. I will say that I always like to keep my f-stop low because it gives like that blurred out background. It's just, it depends what look you're going for, just playing around with it. So once you have all of your settings, the way that you like it and it's good with your lighting and stuff it's time to actually take your portrait and i'm not gonna go through like posing and stuff like that because that's just for an entirely separate video but 
I will say that it takes time to understand what looks good and what doesn't. And sometimes it's gonna take many, many, many pictures. I, I always say the more pictures you can take, the better. So once you've taken all of your pictures and you feel confident that you have at least a couple of good ones in there and you're done with your little photo session, then it's time to start the whole editing process. And this is where it depends on your camera. I haven't really played around with cameras nowadays. This camera is like four years old already or three years old, I think. I'm not sure, but it's not the newest thing on the market. So I don't know how new cameras perform with the whole like syncing directly to your phone. But I know that for this camera, I shoot raw pictures and I can only get those raw pictures if I import them into my computer and then I sync it to my phone. So I know it's a process and I don't always do this. Again, I use my phone a lot for my pictures. I use my phone for everything that isn't portraits or anything that I don't really care if it has a lot of detail or not or if I'm taking like a mirror picture and stuff like that obviously I don't go through this this is only when I take pictures on my camera and I want the quality to remain really really good so before I just couldn't bother with syncing the pictures to my camera and then syncing it to my phone even if I set the settings on my phone or on the play memories app to import it in the best quality that it can, it's still not as good as the raw picture. So I import the pictures into my computer and then from the Lightroom on my computer, I sync it to the Lightroom on my phone and I currently use Lightroom and Snapseed to edit my pictures. I do have a video on how I edit my Instagram pictures and for the most part, the editing process is still the same. I just use Lightroom now. And if you guys don't use Lightroom and you want your pictures to look crisp, I definitely, definitely recommend it. But using Snapseed and apps like that, you can still get beautiful, beautiful pictures, especially if you start off with a raw image. It's still gonna come out amazing, but I have just found that there is just nothing like Lightroom. And I used to be pretty against editing on Lightroom because it's just so time consuming. But you can just edit your pictures however you want and then make a preset of that edit and just paste it on whatever picture you want to keep like your feed consistent and stuff. So yeah, I still pretty much use the same editing techniques. I just use Lightroom as my first step now as opposed to Snapseed. But that's pretty much everything that I do. After playing around with this camera for like three plus years already, changing all the settings and just editing and stuff like that, I have found that the combination of all of these things has given me the best quality pictures and i finally feel like i have reached my style of photography like i feel like before sure i was happy with a lot of the pictures but i wasn't like extremely happy with them and i feel like now a lot of the pictures that i take i'm just i'm just very happy with because i feel like i've finally reached a point where i know how to play with my camera and i know what settings work and i know how i need to edit the pictures in order to retain quality and i just i've i've kind of figured everything out so similarly to that you guys just have to work with what you have so if it's your phone figure out how it is that you can take your self portraits on your phone to get the best image so i know that these tips are very very basic but i feel like these tips are the only thing that you really need in order to create a beautiful image. So yeah, that's everything for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys found these tips helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any extra tips or any certain things that you do to achieve your perfect self-portrait. I'll see you guys in my next video. Hi everyone, in today's video, hi everyone, hello everyone. They, they, they're pretty much we are independent so that is everything so those are all of so that is everything so that is just chase light face light capture light just just bring in all of the light if you want something done correctly you do it yourself